This video is sponsored by NordVPN, which thanks to its 5,300 servers and counting, can transport your internet access to any one of 59 countries across the world, helping to conceal your digital footprint and to help you bypass regional restrictions and blocks. If a website or video says you can't access it from your country in just three clicks or so, you can magically appear in another region that just happens to be able to view that content. Or say, for instance, you use Netflix. The content you can view will greatly vary depending on where you are in the world, so by jumping to another country, you'll gain access to a whole new range of TV series and movies. And if the hacker known as 4chan happens to obtain your IP address while you're using NordVPN, the IP they'll be attacking will be carried out on NordVPN servers somewhere else, and not on your home internet connection. Which is always nice. Right now you can get the two year plan, plus an extra month free, and a bonus gift thrown in, if you use the code CLICKS. 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 Warning. This video contains beautiful examples of vibrant skies. If you think you'll be offended by this sort of content, then please do a full 360 and walk away right now. A wise man once said that, for a map to be successful, it must be sunny. And Valve appears to have listened to this advice, since in the current map pool are many maps with nice blue skies and sunshine. But the sky can always get bluer, and the sunshine stronger. In this video, I'll be doing exactly that. This all started about seven years ago. After finishing work on Disparity, I was experimenting with lighting that I could use for my next map, and I set out to make the most convincing blue sky that I could. You don't realise how blue a blue sky is until you stop and stare at it. If we weren't so used to it being normal, it would be really, really strange. The sky isn't just a blue colour, it's a blue light, shining down in all directions when the weather's nice. And I really wanted to get that pop into my map. So here is what I achieved after lots of adjusting and staring out of the window on a sunny day. Simply looking at this puts me in a bright sunny mood. So let's add it to existing maps in CSGO and see what they look like. Here is Mirage normally, and here it is with my blue sky. It's subtle, but also it isn't because it's really easy to get carried away with the blue. It's addictive and additive. But if you don't like it, then just imagine a setting that's somewhere between the two or whatever, for there will be no half measures in this video. Now a sunny image is about more than just the sky colour. I've also moved the sun's direction so that it's facing more sharply downwards, meaning that shadows are shorter and thus more of the scene is in the sun. And I've tweaked the lighting because if the sky's really blue, then so will be the shadows. So what goes into making an authentic blue sky? First off, the sky is not just one block of colour. It's one colour directly above us, then it fades into another as it approaches the horizon, because that's where the atmosphere is thicker. Whereas directly above us is where it's thinnest, to the point where it's letting some of the space's darkness through. What? Space, I hear you cry. How can you see space through the Earth's thick, protective atmosphere? Wait until night time and you'll see. So yeah, the way I make sky is to have a really bright blue colour surrounding the level, then to use a lighter colour of fog for it to fade into. Since the block around the level is shaped like this, it's closest to the player directly above them, and hence there's the least fog there, and therefore the colour there is the darkest. Just like in real life. So it's all to do with how far the player is from the edge of this blue block. But I hear you cry. Philip, why didn't you just use a blue skybox picture instead? Good point, I could have done that and it would have been a lot easier. But it would have been boring, as it wouldn't have been as dynamic as this real-time fog strategy is. Doing it this way means it's easily adjustable too. Using the fog UI command in game, I can easily adjust the shade and distances of this fog. Hours of endless fun. If I use a negative starting number, it means that stuff's already half foggy even when it's right next to me, so this results in a less aggressive blue colour of sky. I can even change the colour of the fog to whatever I like, and some of these can be quite interesting, if completely unrealistic. Still, it's pretty to look at, isn't it? Using the fog UI command was how I got the colour of the sky for my first CSGO map, Elysium. Sarah B was experimenting with all sorts, and it was thanks to this built-in feature that we settled on a bright orange colour instead of a more subtle, dark brown one. I strongly suggest playing with this yourself if you're at all interested. Let's take a look at another map, Overpass. This is another map that's already supposedly quite sunny, but apply God's Instagram filter to the world and boom! Actually, no, I take that back, this is going too far. There's blue, there's bright blue, and then there's this sickly sweet artificial blue colouring that you can see here. This isn't entirely my fault. The map has some powerful post-processing effects over the top of it, which, if I disable, returns the sky back to a slightly more normal looking blue colour again. But like I said, I'm only using this as a demonstration of how far you can go with this technology. 
and to highlight how washed out CSGO's maps are in the first place. I discovered something very interesting with Overpass's sky. It uses a unique particle system to generate the clouds. Something I'd never noticed before. How interesting. I immediately removed it. But there are places I will be using it elsewhere. I've always felt that Ancient is less friendly looking than Aztec was, so let's see what we can do about that. And this is where I ran into problems with my technique. My fog trick requires the use of a 3D skybox, but Ancient already has a 3D skybox. No problem, in most maps there's enough room for both. But not here, because Ancient Skybox is unique in that it uses the exact same scale as the world itself. I think Valve is simply using the skybox here for optimization, and this ruins my technique since there just isn't enough room in the editor for it. Either the map itself is plunged into fog, which actually looks kind of cool, or I make the fog drop off too abrupt, or I make it so that it stretches out far enough to reveal the edges of the blue box. And none of these options are ideal. It's a bit late for me to suggest new features for the Source engine, but it would be great if the map could have a sky fog feature like this that I've come up with, but for it to be separate from the rest of the 3D skybox so that it doesn't conflict with it, as it did in Ancient's case. And I attempted Nuke as well. Nuke is one of the few maps that I don't think needs to be any sunnier, but I took that as a challenge and made it blurrer anyway. But I couldn't! Anything I tried with my new technique simply made the map look overcast instead. What's going on here? Well, flying across the skybox reveals the problem. The sky has a shadow on it. Or rather, it's not receiving as much blue lighting from below the map as the rest of it is, because the ground's blocking some of it. Things are never easy, are they? So I recompiled the map with 20 times more ambient illumination and by raising the height of the sky. With these minor adjustments, it worked as intended. So here was Nuke before, and here's the new Blue Nuke. Just for you. Making sunny maps sunnier is all well and good, but what if I use my powers to bring sun to a cloudy map? Office is such an overcast looking level. A blue sky on this one makes it look really inviting in all like two bits of it that are outside. Monastery is another cloudy level. Don't get me wrong, I do like its cloudy mountainous setting. It suits it perfectly. In fact, I think making it blue and sunny would ruin it. But I went and did it anyway, and this is what it looks like. Don't lie, you wish you were here. And not here. Militia's a funny one. This was Counter-Strike Source's sunniest, most inviting looking map. Then a few years ago, CSGO updated it to be cold, dark and snowy. So I've returned it back from whence it came, but with a splash more blue. I really like how they made the windmill all rickety and broken for this map, but then I realised it wasn't meant to be like this and it was just a result of a bad map to compile, but I still think it's an improvement. Valve, please break. And do you know those particle clouds from Overpass? I added them here just to see what they looked like. And why stop here? Why not try other colours instead? Honestly, I think for anything other than a blue sky, standard skybox pictures might be a better approach. But at a pinch, this technique can be used to imitate a sunset or nighttime, and so on. Pioneering a technique like this, I did run into problems. Fog with less than 100% thickness looked bad, and every skybox has stuff at different heights, meaning the fog's distances need to be customised to accommodate for them. This obviously could be bypassed if the sky fog was separate from the rest of the 3D skybox, as I mentioned earlier. And I don't like the fog accumulation, which looks too abrupt even when spread over tens of thousands of units. I'd say that's the main issue here. Where it fades between the colours is too small an area, so a custom fog drop-off would be really appreciated here. This is especially needed on a map like Vertigo, where you can view the sky right off into the horizon, where the fog simply can't scale to when confined to the dimensions of a source map skybox. But look at what this feature brings to the table. Look at how train looks after the smog has been cleared and the country has gone green. The cutoff is too abrupt in cache, given how high above the level the box begins, so while it isn't as impressive as it could be here, I can still use it to bring back cache's greenery. Look at how nice Dust 2 looks now, set under a confident blue sky, with not a hint of dust in sight. The sad thing? I showed all this a few videos ago, and nobody even noticed. So what if I change it to a sandstorm instead? That looks awesome too. I've barely scratched the surface of what I can do with this. If I change the blue base texture to red, it opens up yet more possibilities for colour gradients. Don't tell me you don't want this. I don't think this is for everyone, but then a neon AK isn't for everyone either. But for the people who like this sort of thing, it can be everything. So how about this Valve? Bundle the ability to customise the sky colour in with your monthly stat subscription and watch as everybody buys it just to be able to game with meme green skies, or to create an inferno on inferno. And if people want to smurf under a smurf coloured sky, then so be it. 
there. You're welcome to use that million dollar suggestion right there. I guess you could say the sky's the limit.